This was this purpose, this hour, for this hour, for this purpose I've come. John chapter 13, verse 1. Before the Passover feast began, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and return to the Father. He knew. See, that's what I love about the Celtic saints. Because the Father would invite them, Patrick and Columbine and all of those, he would come to them and he would say, hey, I'm thinking such and such a date would be a good time for you to come home to heaven. What do you think? And so there would be a dialogue between the Father and the, and the saints of those times and they would discuss, oh, yeah, look, yeah, that's great, I'll come home then. Or else it might be, well, um, no. And so one of them actually said, no, I don't want to come home then. Oh, no, sorry. He said, yes, yes, I've been waiting to come home. Yes, that's a perfect opportunity. Yes, Father, let's make it that date. And then the father comes to him a few weeks later and says, my paraphrase, good news, bad news. The good news is you're still coming home. The bad news is that the church has prayed. And they said that you're the best teacher that they've got. And they've asked you to stay for another three years. And he went, no. <laughs> he was so upset with the church. It took him ages to get his heart right, right, because he just wanted to go home. He's ready to heaven. He wanted to go home. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, and then when it was time for him to come home, the father said to him, this is the time we talked about. How about this date? And he said, can I have three more days, please? That's right in the middle of the harvest festival and I want to have that with my friends. So, you know, there is a way that you can move in the timing of God, that you can actually know when it's time to go home because you've got an invitation. We should not be taken out by accident, sickness, disease. We should, that's not, that's the way of the world. And I know it happens. I know it happens. I've lost a daughter. I've lost family members to cancer and other things. I know it happens, but I believe there is a place we can get to in Christ where we actually like live forever, but there is a place you can get to in Christ that intimacy with the Father where we, you, know, you can actually discuss these things. Like Kenyon, you know, he, just, he knew when he was going home. He called his family together. They had breakfast together and he prayed for his family and then he said, I'm going home. He leaned back in the, in the chair and just went home. You know, there's a way that, that is different to the world and surely in every area of our life it should be different now I know my father died of cancer my mother you know went through stuff my daughter died I understand none of that sort of lines up with what I'm saying right mm -hmm. but I believe there is a place you can get to yes. when you're walking with God with such closeness agree. that you know there's we have to be different to the world yes. not just in living yes. but in dying we have to be different. We have to be. And yes, we leave a testimony. And yes, we leave eternal deposits in the hearts and lives of others. But when I look back at the early church, and when I look at how the early saints lived, when I look at well, how they walked with God, when I looked at the fact that um, Patrick would say to the king, when two of his children had died, and the king says, I want you to raise my children from the dead. And Patrick says, when I do, not if I do, when I do, you must surrender your life and the lives of everyone in your kingdom to Christ. Right? So the king said, okay, he raises the kids from the dead. That whole kingdom goes to Christ. Or when um, Patrick or Columbine or any one of the others, you know, they were going across the lake um, to another village across the lake and the people would, the, the druids would say, we're going to cause up a storm and we're going to drown that boat. We're going to cause it to sink. And Patrick and, and or Columbine, whoever it was, would say, do your best, right? And they, they went and villages, whole villages would line the lake to see who would come out of that supernatural encounter. Come on. We are going to step into this. Whether you like it or not, there are going to be supernatural encounters. You supernatural encounters. 
This is what God is raising us up into. This is what you've got to be positioned for. This is why you need to understand the timing of the Lord, the positioning of Christ, how to live from that place of rest, how to only do what the Father tells you to do, how to move in the fullness of what he's given us, how to be stewards of the earth, how to, you know, like in your dreams and things. You know, there's often times when I wake up and I'm in the middle of an encounter with a witch or something, you know, and I wake up and I'm and I can see what's happening and it's like, wow, but it's, you know, these things happen. So what I'm saying is that, that what they had in the early church, we can't afford to lose. We've got to say, God, we want to dig that well up again. We want to stand on the shoulders of how they moved and we want to grow in this. We want to move in this. And it's not about works. It's not about religion. It is about the pure love of God being poured out on the earth through his people. It's about Jesus saying, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. That's what it's all about. It's not about works. It's not about going off half cocked. It is about doing what the Father tells you to do when he tells you to do it. It is about worship. It is about loving him, sitting in his presence, coming from a place of rest, understanding the timing of God, understanding that he orders my footsteps, understanding that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm going to walk through it because he's more concerned about my character than he is about zapping me out of something. You know, there's things that he wants to accomplish in us, but we've got to allow Christ to be fully formed within us. And the enemy has taken out too many of our people too early. Too early. He's taken out many of our people too early, and it's been wrong totally wrong and we have to learn how to how to do what the father wants us to do not what the prophets say not what I tell you to do go home and study the word listen to God for yourself what's the Holy Spirit saying to you you know for goodness sake we've got to mature oh my gosh you know allow Christ to be fully formed in us allow Christ to be fully formed it is not about us it's not about our ministry it's not about our families it is about exalting our wonderful Lord and Saviour. It is about giving God all the glory. And as we stand for him and as we worship him and as we do what he asks us to do, because he's so gracious with us that things change in our own lives. It's not about us. And it's not about how much we pray or how much we're in the word. It is about walking in the love, the agape of the Father recognizing that his hand is on your life for good, recognizing that the whole of heaven backs you, recognizing that the blessings of God is just waiting to be released, recognizing that you will live a Goshen life, that you are the redeemed of the Lord, that you are redeemed of the Lord, that just as in Goshen there was light when, when the Egypt was in darkness, there will be light in your home and light in you when the world is in darkness for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We are going to step into this place where we will see supernatural power encounters and whole cities will be one for the Lord in a day we'll see these things we are going to be able to stand in the gap and stop the destruction of the body of Christ because too many are going out in poverty too many are going out too early and this is not the will of the Father so it's coming back to him and saying, Father, we're here, living sacrifices. Yes. And we recognize that you are so good and you're so kind and you are so gracious and so incredibly generous. Yes, yes, yes. You're merciful and compassionate. Yes. You know, every hair on our head, you know, our thoughts before we think them, our words before we say them, you are amazing. Yes. And we don't want to lock you in to religiosity and we don't want to lock you into churchianity and because you're a God who honors free will you kind of allow us to do things that that curtail your power and your presence but we want to step out of the box that we've placed ourselves in and we want to sit truly in that place of rest because as we live from that place of rest and you're in rest in heaven, the frequency of rest brings restoration of all things. It brings restoration of all things. And you know, it says in Acts chapter three, verse 21, 
that Jesus will return after the restoration of all things. So it's recognising that whether we understand the love of God or not, and honestly, it's just such a massive thing, but he wants us rooted and grounded in love. He wants us to experience the height, the depth, the width and the length of his love. He wants you to understand what it is to be held in his arms so that the Father actually fathers you through life. That he takes care of everything. And all we do is what he asks because Father knows best. There is a whole different way of living and it's in his timing in his presence by the power of his love by his goodness and kindness there is nothing I can do to make God love me more and there is nothing I can do that would make him love me less because when he loves, he loves wholeheartedly, faithfully, and forever. That's why people on their deathbeds can say the name of Jesus as they're passing away and be saved. Talk about gracious generosity. But for those of you who feel or sense that your timing might be out a little bit. We can pray that God would realign you with his timing for your life. If you've gone ahead of him, if you're dragging behind him, if you've taken a step or two to the side. <laughs> we, can, we can pray that for you if that's what you want. Because when you start to align with the timing of God, your life opens up and you will find miracles, signs and wonders, opportunities, new doors, avenues, ministry will broaden and widen, business will increase. Once we step into that place or allow God to position us, and again it comes back to positioning, like we had earlier, it's the positioning being positioned in his timing. And so any time you're going through, the, particularly the Old Testament, and you see the word time, hour, whatever it might be that alludes to time, look at it. What is he talking about? It is it the time of a second chance? Is it the power of the word and the name working together to dig out new opportunities for you? Is it the seed? Is your time a seed in his hands to bring forth a harvest? He loves you. The Father has only the highest and the best planned for you. And I know that we've said yes, and we've said yes to positioning. But I think we need to let works drop. My works are never going to please him. They're going to go through the fire anyway. Yeah. Only the stuff that's been initiated by him will be gold and silver and jewels. The stuff that I've initiated, ash. But for some of you, you sort of feel like it's past, it's over, it's too late, it's gone on too long, I've waited too long, it's never going to happen. Or at my age, what's he going to do? All of these things are from the soul and they will destroy you. There is no life in that. You need to hear from the spirit. 